In Dungeons and Dragons, there are many classes a player can choose from. Strong and daring fighters, wizened and brilliant wizards, and stalwart and virtuous clerics among them. But though many of these classes are diverse and versatile in their own right, none show off the adroit skill, masterful cunning, and deft agility like the D&D rogue. But what is a D&D rogue, and why should you be rolling one? D.D. 5 Defining the concept of a D&D rogue is a bit more challenging than many other classes. Versatility is the name of the game, and there are many types of characters that fall under the rogue umbrella that at first glance don't seem very closely related to one another at all. While the fighter fights, the cleric is pious, and the wizard is an expert in the arcane, the rogue does a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. Sometimes they are specialists with abilities honed to the point of world-class expertise, and sometimes they are jacks of all trades. Useful and productive in every situation imaginable, rogues can be thieves of exceptional prowess or expert dealers of death. They can be ranged snipers, stealthy scouts, brutish strong arms, or even criminal masterminds. As different as these archetypes can be, there is one thread that links all these concepts together. Perhaps more so than any other class, what defines the D&D rogue is the eclecticness of their skills and their ability to use indirect strategy to be deadly on the battlefield. But before we detail these various archetypes, let's go over what all rogues, regardless of sword or style, receive from the player's handbook. Not as battle-hardened as a frontline fighter or barbarian, but hardier than a wizard or sorcerer, the rogue gets one d8 hit die to determine their hit point total. Their proficiency with light armor and light weapons, such as knives, short swords, rapiers, and hand crossbows, allows the rogue to stay unencumbered as they use their stealth, sleight of hand, and acrobatics to explore and infiltrate. This light equipment also allows them to be quickly ready for a fight in the event that both skill and guile have failed them. Rogues have proficiency in both dexterity and intelligence saving throws. This serves as a mechanical representation of the class's cunning, know-how, and agility. When it comes to skills, the rogue has a higher number of them and a longer list to choose from than any other class. All rogues choose four from the following list of acrobatics, athletics, deception, insight, intimidation, investigation, perception, performance, persuasion, sleight of hand, and stealth. Further enhancing their skillfulness, all rogues gain the feature Expertise at level 1, which allows them to double their proficiency bonus added to two of these skills or one skill and their checks made with their thieves tools. At level 6, they can enhance two more of their skills in this same way. And at level 11, rogues gain the ultimate feature in proficiency enhancement, Reliable Talent. This feature allows a rogue to treat all their d20 rolls of 9 or lower that add their proficiency bonus as a 10 instead. At level 1, rogues also get their most infamous feature and their bread and butter for damage on the battlefield, their sneak attack. Through cunning or quickness, a rogue knows how to strike subtly or exploit a foe's distraction to maximize their damage. Once per turn, a rogue can deal an extra damage die to one creature they attack. To achieve this, they must either have advantage on the attack roll or an ally must be standing within 5 feet of their target. A sneak attack can only be performed using a finesse or ranged weapon. The extra damage dealt starts as 1d6, but increases as the character gains levels in this respective class. Most remaining features fall into two categories. Firstly, those that enhance physical prowess, such as Cunning Action, the ability to dash, dodge, or disengage as a bonus action. Uncanny Dodge, the ability to take half damage by spending a reaction. Evasion, the ability to evade half or all damage penalties during dexterity saving throws. Elusive, the ability to never be at disadvantage while conscious. Secondly, features that enhance a rogue's keen intellect, such as Thieves' Cant, a secret language amongst rogues. Blind Sense, the ability to hear and be aware of creatures without relying on sight. And Slippery Mind, proficiency in wisdom saving throws. Finally, at level 20, all rogues gain the feature Stroke of Luck, which, once per short rest, gives them the uncanny knack for succeeding whenever they need it most. If a rogue's attack misses a target, or they somehow fail an ability check, they can instead treat the d20 roll as if they had rolled 20. This will most likely guarantee success in most situations, within reason and at the DM's discretion. This is only the general list of things rogues get, not including abilities gained from level 3 specializations called roguish archetypes. These separate paths set rogues apart from each other in drastic ways. You can be a thief, a treasure seeker or criminal that specializes in the larcenous arts of burglary, stealth, and traps. You can be an assassin, a rogue trained in the grim art of death, using poison, stealth, and disguises to eliminate your targets. You can be an arcane trickster, a rogue that enhances their skills with enchantment and illusion magic. You can be an inquisitive, a rogue with unrivaled ability to use their sharp senses to unravel mysteries and detect secrets and lies. 
You can be a mastermind, a rogue of genius intellect that uses their ability to influence, manipulate, and scheme against others. You can be a swashbuckler, a warrior of speed, charm, and elegance who excels in 1v1 combat. Or you could be a scout, a rogue that specializes in spying, ambushing, and surviving in the wilds. So, do you want to stalk the night, unseen and unheard? Do you wish to beguile your foes with skill, cunning, and stealth? Do you wish to become a walking, talking solution to almost any problem a dungeon master can present? Then you should roll a D&D &D rogue.